Welcome back to the respiratory chain in biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, in this video, we're going to go over another type of uncoupling enzyme that's situated in the membrane of mitochondria, and that's called the nicotinamide nucleotide transhydrogenase. I will just call it transhydrogenase because it's really the main example in humans of an enzyme like this. So this protein is going to sit in the membrane. Okay, this is actually what it sort of looks like, and you see that there's a proton gradient up here. Okay, we've talked about this in another video. The protons will rush through a channel in transhydrogenase, and that powers the following reaction. Now, it's hard to see this, but um, you'll have to look carefully. This molecule right here is NAD. Okay, this molecule, notice, that notice the pyridine ring looks a little different, and it has a phosphate. This right here is NADPH. Okay, this is NADPH. This is NADH, and this is NADP. In other words, the net reaction of transhydrogenase is it transfers the hydride from NADPH to NAD, which makes NADH and NADP. Okay, here's sort of a summary up here. Remember that when we have NADPH, that's similar in structure to NADH. So sometimes what can happen is the NADPH can react with the NAD, and the NADPH transfers its hydride to NAD, reducing it to NADH, in which case the NADPH becomes oxidized into NADP. Okay? What's the benefit in doing something like that? Okay, well, number one, it helps to, it's a balancing act between the two nucleotides, NADH and NADPH. First of all, the NADH can be used by the respiratory chain, okay? So if we have tons of NADPH around, we don't necessarily need all that NADPH. So instead, we're just going to transfer the electrons from NADPH into NADH. That NADH can then be used by the respiratory chain. And then this NADP can then go pick up some more electrons and become another NADPH. So something like this is very useful when you just have a lot of excess NADPH. You're not going to need to use all of that NADPH, so why don't you put it in a form that just makes some energy, right? Then NADPH can transfer its electrons into the form of NADH, which again is used by the respiratory chain, particularly complex 1, NADH dehydrogenase. And this over here is the net reaction. And again, the reason it's called a transhydrogenase is it's moving the hydrogen or the hydride from NADPH to NADH. Okay? Generally, this reaction is going to run in the direction that I've shown. It can run the reverse of moving NADH um, and putting the electron to NADPH, but generally that is not observed. It generally runs in the direction from NADPH to NADH. Okay, that's just a lot more useful for the cell, and the free energy just dictates that it runs that direction anyway. So generally, this reaction is irreversible. Okay, and another thing I just wanted to point your attention to, just to make sure you see, is that reaction of NADPH to NADH, the transhydrogenation, is coupled with the movement of a proton through the membrane into the matrix. But remember, this enzyme is an uncoupling enzyme because it doesn't couple the proton movement to ATP synthesis. That's just how we talk about it in the context of the respiratory chain. Okay, so the main two uncoupling pro proteins we have are going to be the uncoupling protein and the transhydrogenase. And there's another one that's not shown here. And we're actually going to talk about it in another video, and it's termed the inorganic phosphate translocase. You can look in uh, later on in this playlist and you'll hopefully see that video, and it'll explain how we get phosphate into the matrix of the mitochondria. It's also coupled with proton movement from the inner membrane space to the matrix. All right. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.